they say ignorance is bliss. I think not. Ignorance is cruelty. Ignorance leads to unhappiness. Ignorant le ignorance leads to death. Ignorance leads to many things that brings life downward. And that's what many of your politicians or leaders may feed you is a bunch of lies and ignorant people believe them. A lot of people may also confuse knowledge as the stuff that I put out here on this channel as fear mongering. But it's not if those are the facts. Knowledge is power and knowledge does beat ignorance. Now what am I talking about today? I'm talking about the jobs data. I've been talking about this quite often on this channel for quite some time. And we're starting to see that in the data that came out today for the U.S. non-farm payrolls report. And I'll talk about also Canadian jobs data as well. But let's talk about the U.S. job non-farm payroll report that came out worse than expected. This is a jobs report that comes out every first Friday of the month. It's data collected by the government. It talks about how much jobs have been added for the previous month. And the number came out at 142,000, which was less than expected. The expectation was 164,000. The number before that was sitting around 114,000, and they found out that that, act, that number is actually not true. It actually should be sitting at 89,000. Now, why does this matter? 142,000. Fantastic. Woohoo. Jobs have been added. 142,000 of them, right? That's what they will tell you when they come out during the elections and the polls and the media saying, guess what? We've added this amount of jobs. But what people don't understand is if you look at the trend over the past months, it's been downwards. And if you saw in my previous video as well, <laughs> that you had the government come out and revise its previous year's data saying that they were off by 800,000 jobs, meaning that 800,000 jobs were added by mistake and actually should have been less than that. And those are the prelim numbers, by the way. We're going to know the final numbers next year, which means it could be better, it could be worse. But when you look at this, these jobs reports and these jobs numbers coming out month over month over month, you're seeing a trend of it declining over and over and over. You're seeing the unemployment rate tick up tick up and tick up and we have the yield curve finally uninverted in positive territory because you have the bond traders out there expecting some sort of rate cuts to come very soon the bond traders feel that yes 100% we're going to get the 25 basis point rate cut that's a done deal but more likely especially after this report we have more traders thinking that a 50 basis point rate cut is more likely than a 25 basis point rate cut. Now, why does this all matter is because when you look at past and you look at history, whenever the jobs data decline and the unemployment rate ticks up, right? The unemployment rate in the U.S. came out to be about 4.2% and it's been ticking up. Um, from for, for many months as well, the lowest point was around 3.5% and we're creeping up slowly and slowly. When this phenomenon happens, it always starts gradually before it gets worse off. And when this phenomenon happens, we tend to see 
that event. What is that event? That event is when the market, the economy goes into a hard landing recession. Okay. You know, you don't really have to be a scientist to understand this. You can even give this to a, you know, three-year-old or four-year-old and show them a graph of the U.S. non-farm payrolls report and show them previous historic events like leading up to the great financial crisis in 2006, 2007, 2008, where the non-farm payrolls report number went from a large positive number to a slow decline, slow decline to all of a sudden rapid decline to the negative territory. Right now we're seeing positive numbers and, and let me tell you next month this number 142,000 could be revised lower, right? It, it, it's just like they did with the previous number before, uh, before this one. And when we start to head towards zero, eventually we're going to get into negative, which means that there will be less jobs, there will be layoffs, and it will continue. Why do you think Warren Buffett has come out and sold <laughs> billions of dollars of Bank of America stock? Why do you think the CEO of NVIDIA has been quietly selling millions and millions and millions of shares? And NVIDIA right now is, is dropping since its last earnings report, right? Reported a strong earnings, but it's dropped since earnings from $130 down to now $104. The VIX, which basically picks up when, whenever you have the equity market, the stock market starting to sell off in an aggressive way, is also picking up and is sitting around 21. <laughs> the pawn market, all right, uh, flight to safety trade is starting to play out. The bond market is picking up, especially the long end. And we're seeing that market rally further and further. And when you, when you look at markets on a daily basis, right, and, and you break down the mechanics of it, you see in the past couple of days, we've been seeing these massive swings, right? Um, and, and these swings, I like to call them, especially when it goes up, these squeezes. But then right after those squeezes happen, they get rejected very quickly and you see the price come down. Just like as of I'm speaking right now, it is Friday, um, September 6th, 10.30, 10.27am, and we have the equity markets right now, NASDAQ, S&P 500, Russell 2000, um, making new lows on the session. And Dow Jones is also about to do that as well. All going lower after a week payrolls report. But what happened to the sentiment or the ideology of we have weak data as good for stocks because that means rate cuts, that means things will get better. What happened to the ideology that as soon as rate cuts come, the real estate market is going to boom and you better buy a house very quickly. What happened to the ideology we're getting a soft landing and this yield curve doesn't really tell us anything and there's no hard landing? What happened to the ideology, look, the data is fine, it's strong. We're going to curve this recession. There's not going to be a hard landing. It's going to just continue going up higher and higher. What happened to the ideology that the, uh, the equity markets are just going to tear through new highs even regardless if the data gets softer and softer? Another interesting point in, in the jobs report as well, <laughs> average hourly earnings it came in, picked up a little bit higher, which caused the bond market initially to sell off on that number. But if you look at the revision, if you look at the previous number that was revised, it revised down 
to negative from 0.2 to minus 0.1 percent negative 0.1 percent now this is a big thing because earnings wages does feed into inflation and if you have average hourly earnings going to negative territory you not only have disinflation but you have deflation happening that means wages is getting worse off which is going to trickle into the lower inflation which the central banks out there are going to be attaining that 2% or even go way well below the 2% because why does that happen because of this demand crunch because of this recession because the jobs market is getting worse off which is going to trickle into those lower prices which is going to trickle into the economy crumbling that's correct so when you see a number like this minus negative 0.1% it does tell you about the inflation story, which yes, inflation is getting weaker. So inflation is getting weaker. Shouldn't the stock market be happy? You got you got weaker inflation numbers from the previous numbers rev revised lower, and you got weaker um, jobs number. Now you may say, oh, but today's report came in higher, 0.4 percent. Well, it could be revised lower in the next report. No, the equity market's selling off because they're starting to worry about this upcoming recession. And you're seeing the layoffs from a lot of companies. You're seeing CEOs sell shares. You're starting to see worries and jitters. The VIX starting to pick up. Volatility starting to pick up. Elections around the corner. All adding up to the Kodak moment which eventually we're going to see in about 6 to 12 months, let's say. Another thing is we also had the Canadian numbers come out as well. Why bring Canada as well? Because it was one of the first G7 countries out there to start cutting rates. And they cut rates in three consecutive, um, uh, three consecutive uh, terms. And a, they brought rates to around 4.25%. Um, the unemployment rate for Canada is sitting at 6.6%. The job market in Canada, the employment change went to 22.1 versus the 23.7, the expected. But the biggest thing here is the unemployment rate that came off came out worse off and that is also picking up thus why we had three rate cuts in a row and we're going to continue to get another one in October and so forth mind you that this number the unemployment rate in Canada is picking up from lows around 4.9 percent and it's now at 6.6 .6. It's creeping up every month. We're back to levels in late 2021. And again, if you look at historic, um, if you look at historic um, uh, data, you see that as this starts to pick up, and especially when it goes more than 0.5% above the lowest point, which was the 4.9%, we always tend to see that hard landing recession. The highest unemployment rate that um, we saw just recently during COVID time in 2020, it was at 13.7%. It's at 66 So we're basically almost a half of what the COVID rate was. And we haven't even had the black swan event yet, the hard landing event. So is ignorance bliss? I don't think so. Let me know what you guys think below in the comments. 
And I think you're seeing the signs out there in the markets, in the data. And it's just September so far, 2024. We have yet to see the rate hikes from previously, the further rate hikes, the higher ones to play into the current economy. This is just the beginning, right? We have yet to feel the high five plus five percent rates. And even if we're cutting rates, you know, it works with a lag. We're not going to feel those rate cuts until, according to a Fed paper, we're not going to feel it until nine to 12 months from now, which means what? One year of hell. One year of things getting worse off. One year of still feeling the pain of higher rates, even though maybe inflation is coming down, hourly wages coming down, your wages coming down, layoffs happening. They're going to come and they're going to do those emergency rate cuts to try to save the day. Pump money. We're going to see that unfold in the next 12 months. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment below. Subscribe. Hit the like button, bell icon to be notified of the next video. And I'll see you guys around. Cheers. Bye.